Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to go through how to set up Snowflake mirroring to mirror data from a Snowflake data warehouse into a Fabric data warehouse. So this is a little bit different than using a pipeline, which I did in a previous video. The pipeline is more batch, so you can schedule it and have it uh, pull things in on a scheduled basis, kind of what we're used to in either an ELT or ETL um, kind of an approach. This approach is more database replication, so this uses um, uh, change data capture. So as every change is applied to Snowflake, that change will be uh, reflected in the Azure, in the I'm sorry, in the Fabric Data Warehouse as well. Um, this does have some ramifications with cost because uh, whereas if we run a pipeline, we're just going to uh, hit Snowflake when we run the pipeline. With uh, mirroring, we're uh, potentially hitting um, uh, Snowflake a lot more, or at least making it do more work. So it actually may um, uh, right, rack up more charges on the Snowflake side, not so much on the Fabric side, but on the, on the Snowflake side. However, if we want like real-time um, replication from Snowflake into Fabric, this is definitely the way to go. So let's go ahead and get into it. Um, so I'll go into my Fabric environment. And the first thing I need to do is, is enable this feature within um, Fabric. So um, within the admin portal, I'm gonna search for the mirroring feature. And by default, this will be turned off, but I'm gonna turn it on. And so I'll just enable this um, by sliding the button over to the enable side. Um, I'm gonna open this up to the entire organization. Um, you can be more restrictive, but this is a test environment, so let's turn it on. And then we see here that this could take 15 minutes to um, be applied. So I'm gonna take a break at least in the video and when we came back we saw that um, uh, we do have some new uh, icons so here we have mirroring for snowflake and sql database and cosmos obviously we're going to do snowflake today so let's go ahead and pick that and here we need to give the mirror database a name so i'm going to give it uh, a name that i can kind of pick out so um, this is a adventureworks subset database that i created in snowflake so i'll call this awdw snowflake um, maybe not DB, let's call it mirror so we can definitely see in the in the menu uh, what we're looking at. So we'll go ahead and create this mirror. And then at this point, um, we need to choose the Snowflake environment. Um, I already have a Snowflake connection. Um, if you uh, wanna know how to create one of these, look at I have a previous video on using pipelines with mm -hmm. Snowflake and I, I set this connection up there so you can go back and look at that video for details. But here we're gonna pick the um, ADWD or AWDW, it's hard to say, Snowflake database on the Snowflake side. And if I look in Snowflake, I can see here's this, you know, here, here's the database. Um, there are just a couple tables in there, so it's just for demo. Um, but now we'll go to the next step. Um, I'm going to turn off the mirror all data because my user account really has access to more than just this particular database. Um, and so I'm going to turn that off so I can pick just the couple of tables that I have loaded into the um, AdventureWorks database on the Snowflake side. Um, and you see all these extra demo tables here. Um, I probably could have done this smarter by creating a user account just for replication so all this stuff didn't show up. But in this case, I'm just gonna you know, pick out the couple tables that I want and leave the others behind. But it's also a good kind of to think about. You don't have to replicate the whole database. You can be selective. And now Fabric's gonna go out and interrogate the, um, the data and show me some previews, um, first 10 rows of each of these tables. So I'm just gonna confirm that, yeah, this looks pretty good. Yep, that looks right. And the resellers looks right. So now I'll just go ahead and say, start the mirror. So at this point, um, Fabric's gonna create a database um, within the workspace to, to land the data into, and it's gonna set up the background jobs to uh, read from the, um, uh, change data capture from uh, Snowflake as changes are made. So that's what it's doing here. And then once this monitor button lights up, I can click on that and I can kind of see the status. So I could come back here and look at the status of the mirror anytime. I can see here that it is running. Um, after a little bit, the rows replicated. So I've got 702 reseller rows and about 60,000 uh, sales rows. I only put those two tables into the uh, Snowflake side. So then to confirm that it's actually working, I'm gonna go find the uh, database. So there's the mirror and it has a this has a SQL analytics endpoint. So I'm gonna go into there and let's run a query just to make sure the state is really here. Oh. And there's the resellers, there's the sales. Those are the only two tables that we selected. And I can see that data is there and there's the sales data. Yep, that's there too. So this all looks good. So what I wanna do now is just um, to, to show how the data does 
actually uh, uh, mirror from the other side. So we're going to look at what's in the resellers table right now, and um, and then we'll head over to Snowflake and add more to it and see how long it takes to get here. So we'll do the resellers order by reseller key descending should give us uh, we can see the uh, the last pub, prim, the last primary key in that table. So let's look at that. And the last one is reseller name. I gave it. It's a test record. Abel Baker, 702. If we look on the Snowflake side, there's that's where I inserted that before. But let's kind of take a look at this. So Charlie Delta, you know, that'll be the next one. So we'll insert another one. And it says we've inserted one record, so that's great. Now let's go ahead and look and see what we actually have. So we'll do the same thing, just order by reseller key descending and see how much data we have in here now. Okay, so there's Abel Baker, but then Charlie of the Delta is our new record. Let's head back to Fabric, just rerun this query and see if that new change has been mirrored. And sure enough, it has. So that's mirroring in a nutshell. Um, all we had to do was to create a connection to Snowflake, which you can take a look at in the previous video of, on uh, uh, Fabric Pipeline of how I did that. Uh, enable the feature within the tenant and set up the mirror database, point to the tables we want to mirror, and go ahead and let it run. Um, again, this will have some impact on uh, the Snowflake uh, compute because um, Snowflake compute, you know, it's it's going to have to be a little more alive to, to send updates uh, on a, on a real-time basis. But if our need is to replicate the data in near real time, um, you know, we could replicate a, a couple tables um, and, and stream data over that way, uh, which would be uh, more real time than running pipelines on a scheduled basis. So I hope that was uh, helpful and interesting. If not, I hope you at least learned something. I'll see you next time.